Sure? Mm -hmm. We're good? All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about inflammation. Uh, there's a reason for that. We'll get to it. So the point of today is for me to help you take back control. That's the uh, mission statement of our office at Dynamic Health. Provide high quality care and help you take control so that you can live healthy, active lifestyles. So a major component of getting you healthy is inflammation. In the group today, how many, who here says I'm healthy? How do you know you're healthy? Mostly. Right? <laughs> Mostly? What do you think the first sign might be that you're not healthy? That's what I was looking for. Most people say, feel tired. when I feel unhealthy, when I feel sick. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't really rely on what we feel, right? Because think about the guy who had a heart attack. What did he feel like? yesterday right. mm -hmm. he felt fine right. but all the while there was this process developing within his body that he was on this path that had been developing for years but all along the time felt fine yeah. so that was a trick question mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell really if you're healthy or not because you can't really rely on how you feel so we do testing, but we'll come to that. Inflammation, a unifying theory of disease. This was pulled from the Harvard Health Medical School. And what it is reporting here, this was 2020 when this was posted, is that there's mounting evidence suggesting that inflammation is the underlying cause to a majority of all of our degenerative diseases. So they, the four horsemen of the medical apocalypse, coronary artery disease, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, may be riding the same steed, inflammation. So that's why we're talking about inflammation today. That's why we got you here. I'm glad you're here so we can talk about it. But before we go into, uh, into what can we do, let's kind of back up and look at what is inflammation. So the process by which the body's white blood cells and substances they produce protect us from infection, from foreign organisms such as bacteria, viruses, and it also helps damaged tissue heal. That actually sounds pretty good, right? So how can inflammation cause all these diseases yet also be good for us? Well, it comes down to the difference between acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation is the inflammation that we would consider healthy, natural. <clears throat> what happens is first there's some kind of injury to the tissue in this example, a pin has pierced the skin. This releases chemical signals. One of those examples being histamine. We've all heard of that, right? You take your antihistamine. So allergies are, uh, play a role in this as well. It's an immune response. So histamine is released. Then the blood vessels dilate. So they go from here to here. And what that does is it opens up these little tiny holes in the blood vessel that allows the white blood vessels, the white cells rather, the white blood cells to come out of the blood vessels and they start to eat up any pathogens that might have been introduced in there, the viruses and bacteria. It also helps eat up any damaged tissue, cells that were ruptured, kind of clean all that up. And then the next step, phase three, um, it is healing, tissue heals. So that's what happens here in the acute uh, inflammation. You have a stimulus, the immune helper cells do their job, 
and then you have the end of the stimulus and healing. Where it goes wrong is when we have continued stimulus, ongoing stimulus. So the immune cells go out and they start doing their thing. However, we have another stimulus and they go out and, they're, and they can't ever quite catch up to it. And then over time you get cellular changes, which in, impact the function of the tissue. The tissue starts not working properly, whether this is uh, situations, well, more often we see this in like a uh, injury to the low back or whatever the injury was, we keep doing it and we have repeated stimulus and it can never quite heal and catch up. Then we have cellular changes. We can see those on x-ray, right? This, we see the disc a little thinner. We see bone spurs start to form, uh, but it happens in the blood vessels happens right the blood vessels go into the heart for example that's chronic inflammation that's running the show there so just to kind of recap acute inflammation can come from trauma as we discussed but also allergic reactions chemical irritants cuts lacerations infections so if you have ongoing stimulus, think about the allergic reaction. We talked about histamine. Ongoing, that in turn turns to chronic inflammation and ultimately leads to a host of different diseases. So what is it, you know, you guys came to the workshop. What were you hoping to get out of it? Anyone want to throw something out? Fatigue. All right. I'm sure that inflammation is a part of that. Have arthritis. Arthritis. Inflammation in the joints. Right? And then there are different types of arthritis. For example, rheumatoid. There's the osteo. Osteo. You know, that's the more traumatic type. There's a genetic component. But then you have rheumatoid, which is an autoimmune type of arthritis. Your immune system starts seeing the joint tissue as an invader, starts uh, going to work on it, creating chronic inflammation, because it's never going to resolve that, right? So it's just quiet. So for those of you on uh, Zoom, for those of you on Zoom, uh, good chance you're thinking, well, I'd, I'd like to know how chronic inflammation affects heart disease, for example. The reason I say that is because that's the number one cause of death in America. Everyone's been affected by heart disease, right? Everyone's had a family member or you're currently going through it. You're on a statin medication, you know, cholesterol's high, right? You're on high blood pressure medication. So it's so common. Number two is cancer. And then now, number three is COVID-19, or at least it was in 2020 when the study was done, maybe not still. But um, COVID-2 had a high inflammatory you know, link. Remember the cytokine storm? Mm -hmm. So um, this is an interesting, so we go back to cholesterol, number one. Inflammation, not cholesterol is a cause of chronic disease. So that, that ties cholesterol in now, right? We talk about heart disease, cholesterol, we know it's associated, we're on anti-cholesterol medication. Inflammation though, may be important when it comes to looking at this, right? Because you know, still the number one cause of death, so what's the missing link? It's this inflammation. Has anyone ever told you that inflammation is the cause of all of these diseases? So just to kind of throw out a few, if you can't read it on the uh, internet. We got neurological diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, pulmonary disease, such as asthma, COPD, bronchitis, bone disease, osteoarthritis, osteopenia, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, metabolic disorders such as type two, diabetes, renal failure, kidney, 
cardiovascular disease, of course, atherosclerosis, heart failure, stroke, hypertension, irritable bowel, Crohn's, colitis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, and diabetes. So that is a lot. And that's not really encompassing all of it. Really, 75 to 90% of all of our diseases are inflammatory in nature. There's an inflammation component to it. So what can you do? What can you do? What was it? Live on tart cherry juice. Tart cherry juice. I was thinking someone might say Advil. Advil. Well, no. The problem with that, there's a problem, right? Yeah. Using anti-inflammatories long term, well, yes, that would help you decrease your inflammation throughout your body. What do you think would happen if we treat only symptoms, but never address the underlying cause? It's not, you're not going to get better. The underlying mm -hmm. cause, whatever that may be, we haven't got there yet. You think that's gonna get better or worse? No, it's gonna get worse. Too. Yeah, it gets worse. It doesn't stay the same, it, it gets worse. And so, what is the cause of chronic inflammation? So, I'm a chiropractor, so I'm a little bit biased, but in 1910, <laughs> The Chiropractor's Adjuster, that was a book written by D.D. D. Palmer, where he wrote that there were three causes of disease. And he said thoughts, toxins, and trauma. Stress. Over 110 years ago. So if we kind of update that to today's way of talking about things, we would say mental stress, physical stress, and chemical stress. Who has that? <laughs> we, all got it. we all got it. Which one do you have more? Which one's plaguing you more than the other? Or is it a combination of all of those? <laughs> so what I'm going to do in the next couple of slides, we'll break down each of these categories. Um, ultimately, it's not going to be a deep dive because I feel like each one of these things could be a workshop in and of itself. And I plan to do that um, in the future. But let's go through it. So chronic stress, how does that cause inflammation? Well, whether we're talking physical, mental, or chemical, this is one way. This is, may not be the entire picture, but this is one thing that's going on. Have you ever heard of cortisone? Yep. Cortisone, that's the injection, you know? And that's what you get to take out the inflammation, right? <laughs> it's an anti-inflammatory, a steroid anti-inflammatory. So a strong one, yeah, that's what it is. Well, our body produces something very similar, and it's called cortisol. And cortisol is released anytime we're stressed, whether it be physical, mental, or chemical. We're releasing cortisol. And when your cortisol levels peak, it ravages the body, it does a whole host of things to you. But um, on top of that, we have receptors built throughout our cells that respond to cortisol. So cortisol is an anti-inflammatory natural that we produce. But after a while, if we keep producing it, keep producing it, keep producing it, the receptors burn out and it's not responding now to the cortisol. And so now our inflammation levels go. So that's it, I mean, that's the link. So we're burnt out, and we're burnt out on physical stress, mental stress, and chemical stress. This is similar to diabetes, right? In diabetes, it's insulin. Our body produces insulin in response to us eating sugar. And then the sugar has to get into the cells. The insulin does that. The insulin is the key that unlocks the door to allow the sugar into the cell. In that case, you're so overloaded, overstimulated with sugar that those receptors burn out. And now the door doesn't open to insulin. 
It tries, but it doesn't open. They burn out. But this is the same thing. It's just a different uh, system. So let's come back to this slide here. <clears throat> we have, I want to replace this with this. Mental, physical, and chemical stress. All leading to chronic inflammation and then again all of these diseases. So we want to control this, we have to control this. So we talked about uh, what would happen if you don't treat the underlying cause of inflammation. What would happen if you were to find and treat the underlying cause of your inflammation? Yeah, how would you feel? What would happen to your health? So, I was telling someone earlier, um, I started our anti-inflammation program here at the office just seven days ago. I'm gonna be 40 next, well, in two months. And over the last couple years, I found myself feeling that, that low-grade inflammation in my back. You know, and being a chiropractor, I can, and I work here, I can get all the treatment I want. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was still there. It's like kind of burning beneath the surface. And it was starting to affect my sleep to a degree as well, waking me up maybe an hour before I would like to get up. And so that in turn affect other things, but started the anti-inflammation anti uh, program that we got, and it's only been seven days, and the burn's gone. The burn's gone, which is awesome. You know, it's a lot like, you, you can tell the difference when you take an Advil, right? It's like, I feel good. If only I could feel like that all the time. All the time, but you can't. Because <laughs> the Advil, after a while, burn a hole in your stomach, it'll, you know, do other things. Yeah, dude, yeah. So you can't do that. But yeah, I, you know, I'm actually pretty amazed my results so far. Let's uh, hone in here on mental stress. What can we do for that? The only thing that you know I can say is make sure you're taking time for yourself. You're doing something you love every single day. We call it mental decompression. We have the uh, physical decompression machines downstairs. <laughs> this is mental decompression. Same idea. Uh, for some people that's not enough. You know, you, you got bigger issues, you know, more stuff going on and maybe that can... What we're working with uh, currently, well, it, it's an upcoming program at our office. It's called Brain Tap. And that helps to kind of uh, get you into a meditative state without having to work on it, you know, for years. And so with that, we can help you decompress. And so we'll have more on that in the future. Let's talk about the physical stress. This is kind of like my expertise area being a chiropractor. So we look at the spine. <clears throat> From the back to the front, the spine should be completely straight. Oftentimes it is not. There is a tilt, there's a curve. And so what that does is it creates more stress in one area than in others. I like to use the idea, if this were a stick, and you know, I take and I compress like this, it's not gonna break, right, strong. But if I take a stick and I have a, a little bend in it, and I take and I compress it, it's gonna snap. And it's gonna snap at the apex of that curve. And that's because there's more stress, more physical stress on that area. So that's a physics problem. And then from the side, we have three curves. So a forwards curve in the neck, backwards in the mid-back, and then a forwards in the lower back. This is an x-ray of a neck. Here we can see that normal curve right there. And here we have an abnormal curve. You see the difference? 
That thing's going in the wrong complete direction, isn't it? That's actually my wife after, after a car accident. Yeah. And so, what we want to do, because there's now more stress on the front of that, she's in danger of 5, 10, 15, 20 years, who knows how long, having those cellular changes, having the inflammation kind of change the cell structure, that's essentially going to create osteoarthritis. Now, I said before, genetics plays a role in it. Some people develop it faster than others, but that's what she, that's her future if we don't fix that. Which, um, I took another, we did treatment on her and it was significantly better. I don't know if I have that, I don't think I do. This is a different patient. So his, he also has that kind of reverse curved, his head's way out in front. That's putting a lot of stress, a lot of physical stress on the neck. It's like holding a bowling ball out here, right? How long can you hold a bowling ball out here? <laughs> so the further out it goes, the more leverage it has. Much easier to hold it here. So people carry stuff on top of their head. But his neck's, or his head's way out here and it's putting so much stress on this. And over time, you can see now, instead of the disc looking nice and thick like it should, it's compressed. And we're seeing cellular changes as well. We're seeing the bone spurs forming on the front and the back. This is the same patient went and had surgery, which sometimes you have to, sometimes that's necessary. Let's say you're having progressive loss of uh, muscle strength, you're dropping things, you can't grip, and it's getting worse and worse. Well, if there's compression on the nerve that's so bad and we can't get it back, you know, in a certain amount of time, well, then that's what you got to do because the nerve uh, damage can become permanent. You got to get pressure off the nerve. So he had a surgery. But at the same time, if you look at him now, post surgery, what's the problem? No curve. Still no curve. So, anyway, that's why physical therapy, the stuff we do downstairs, that helps get that back. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, it doesn't happen. It takes time for some more than others. Some people, and there's a genetic component there too. And then there's also, well, how long has it been there? There's things that are involved with that, but it can be done. Now, maybe not take them and make them look perfect, but you can certainly reduce the amount of physical stress on those joints. Talking about chemical stress now, have you heard of the anti-inflammation diet? No, anti-inflammation. So we have inflammatory foods and anti-inflammatory. This goes to chemical stress. Now there, are, there is uh, environmental chemical stresses, right? Like toxins in our environment and that's worthy of a talk in itself as well. But the food, the stuff we put in our body, I'm gonna argue makes a bigger difference um, so inflammatory foods are fried foods, sodas are fine, carbs, lard, processed meats, everything pretty much processed. <laughs> if you look at the anti-inflammation, you got tomatoes, fruits, nuts, olive oil, leafy greens, fatty fish. The general rule of thumb though is like, if it's a natural, pro you know, think of Whole30, right? then it's anti-inflammatory. Now there are a couple exceptions to that, but for the most part, you can live by that rule. And so olive oil, for example, is, you know, you squeeze out of olives. It happens to be anti-inflammatory. Vegetable oil, I don't even know how they make that. <laughs> where, where does it come? Yeah, there's not vegetable in it. I'm not sure. I know when you go to a restaurant, they tend to use peanut oil, which uh -huh. this says nuts, but peanuts happen to be inflammatory. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think nuts, are, uh, peanuts are technically nuts. They're legumes. They're legumes, right. So,
So anyway, that's inflammatory. Um, when it comes to meats, it's pretty much anything that's eating naturally, what it would eat is anti-inflammatory. But if it's been, so you look, you're driving uh, down the country, you see a bunch of cows out there eating grass, you're like, oh, that's good, let's, how nice. Well, they take those cows and they put them in the feed farms where they're fed corn. So they don't eat grass, some do, that's called grass fed, they, they eat grass all the time, but um, anyway. <laughs> when they eat the corn, they become inflammatory. And then we eat them. So we become inflamed. So the diet's a big part. Uh, I was telling you earlier about um, the anti-inflammatory program that I'm on that, that our office just kicked off. Uh, a component of that program is changing the way you eat. So I'm like everyone else, you know. I like all this stuff. <laughs> That's why I'm currently 20 pounds heavier than I usually would like to be. <laughs> Might not look like it with the coat on, but um, yeah, so changing the way you eat. I'm now eating primarily, you know, meat, vegetables, and fruits. And I'm, I'm just fine, I'm surprised I'm just fine, but that has to do with the other um, components of the program. So stop feeding the fire, number one. But what are you gonna do about the fuel there that's just lingering, burning, smoldering? So you look at this uh, picture here. What we have is visceral fat. It's the first to go with weight loss. It's accumulated with stress. They, they mean mental stress. And then also, it releases high amounts of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So it's just there, releasing cytokines, releasing inflammation. So you gotta eliminate the fuel. Um, back to the anti-inflammation program, it's called endobiologics. The way that works is it causes you to increase in the secretion of Chemical, chemical called adiponectin. So it's created, it breaks down fat is what it does. It regulates sugar levels and it regulates your metabolism. So the reason I'm not hungry and like fiending for all those bad foods is because well, I'm giving my body what it actually needs. But also, I'm using my fat. I'm burning fat for energy so I don't get hungry. As a matter of fact, over the last, I ate 600 calories yesterday, 500 calories the day before that, 500 calories the day before that. I'm not hungry. I can't believe it. <laughs> so, uh, this was a study they did uh, with participants who had taken the same uh, set of supplements that I've been taking, and what they did was 10 week study in this case, so this was then a baseline, this was then 10 weeks later, and they tracked all of this. Weight, weight circumference, they tracked uh, fat percentage, the bad cholesterol, total cholesterol. CRP is an inflammatory marker. So when that's high, it means you're inflamed, and it can tell you how inflamed you are, depending on how high it is. And then this was adiponect, and that molecule I was telling you that kind of does all those things. So at the end of the study, what you'll find is that adiponectin was way up in the, the group who got the treatment. 19.4 versus placebo 2.8, right? That's uh, milligrams per liter. So that's a huge difference between the two groups. You look at the C-reactive protein, it was 0.78 down. In the uh, control group, the group that got no, that got the placebo, 0 0.01. So a huge difference. Fat percentage, placebo group, down 1.99. Treatment group, down 6.3%. And then, this is in kilograms and centimeters, so weight, I, I translated it for you guys. 
So weight was 28 pounds down in 10, 10 weeks, and waist was six inches down. I saw that number, 28 pounds, uh, when I looked at it maybe, was it five days ago? And I thought, that's crazy. 28 pounds in 10 weeks? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But I'll tell you, since I've been on this program, and it's been seven days, exactly seven days, I've lost nine pounds. Wow. Yeah, nine pounds. And Dr. Cox has been doing it for, I think he said 13 days? Seven, eight, nine. Maybe he said 10 days? I think it was like 12 days, something like that. 12 days, and he was 13 pounds down. That was yesterday. So, it's amazing. Um, our office offers different things that we can do to help you get back control. Being the doctor supervised weight loss program, you know, it's not just. Uh, it's supplements, it's changing your diet, but it's also we, we keep contact with you via an app. We can work with you the whole way. We have ultra slim light therapy treatments, which also helps in similar fashion to release fat from the cells. Um, I like to think of it as this is more, you know, kind of get the whole body. And then with the, with the light, we can target, you know, those tricky spots. We got the next level testing, which gives you your cardiometabolic score. And what's nice about that is at some point in the future, you take it again, you can see how it's improved. You see how these changes you made have improved. So cardiometabolic, how's your metabolism? How is your heart and blood vessels? Cardiovascular system. And then the last thing over here is the AIMS testing. And AIMS is a food allergy test. So we go back to chemical stresses, we've talked about allergies a bit already, but what if you're low-key allergic to something you've been eating? That's gonna cause the release of histamine, it's gonna cause that same cascade into chronic inflammation, and you just, repetitive stimulation, and now here you go, you're in the chronic. So the AIMS test can help you determine, I need to stay away from this, 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 and this, and now you know. So that's what that's all about. So who would like to determine if the cause of your problems are due to out of control inflammation? Who would wanna know? The good news is it only costs you 59 bucks to find out. We put together a panel of blood tests for you. We'll send you off, get them done. We'll bring you back, go over the results. The CRP, C-reactive protein, the ESR, that's urethrocyte sedimentation rate, B12, and vitamin D. I didn't talk a lot about how specifically that's all connected. More for the uh, future talk. But that's, that's the panel we put together. We'd like to invite you to get it done. We'll set you up to go over the results. You can see where are you at on a scale of you know, zero to bat, <laughs> where, where do you lie? And then with that knowledge, with that information, you can determine how important is it now that I take the next step to get it under control? And whatever that next step may be, we can talk about it. We can sit down with you and look. We can look at the physical, we can look at the mental, we can look at the chemical and determine what is the best plan for you. I think that's it, that's it. We can open the floor for questions. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Does that blood work, you do it here? We have to send you out to? LabCorp. LabCorp. Yep, but we'll, we'll set you up, we'll order it, get you going. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you. Thank you guys. I hope that it was informational and I hope that the knowledge gain can help point you in the right direction and in the end of the day that it helps you. Thank you guys so much for coming. Just want to let you know if you're interested in scheduling a one-on-one -on -one with a provider, there's no cost to that to talk about all these options that we have. We do have a lot. There's some on the table. There's a lot more that we offer. 
Um, our next workshop is going to be next Tuesday. That is going to be a training for union leaders understanding federal workers' compensation paperwork. So just a heads up on that. And then we'll have another workshop in February as well. So stay tuned. We'll keep you guys posted. If you're not following us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, please do. I know most of you guys do, but we post a lot of great information on there so that way you know what's going on. And on the 26th, we're having a huge party. If you're not coming, you should. It's going to be 4.30 to 6.30, so that's going to be next Thursday. And for anybody that doesn't know, Dixie will be here next week and available during certain times. So if you have any questions about scheduling, any information, just let me know. And thanks for coming, guys. These are for you guys, okay? Anyone know what that is? It is. But what's hidden in here, here's...